Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to clean the carbon deposits from the intake ports and intake valves on the BMW N54 and N55 turbocharged six-cylinder engines. Now, these engines have a problem with carbon buildup that are unique to direct injected engines, and these show it up pretty heavily. On a direct injected engine, the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder versus into the intake port. So the back of the intake valves and the intake ports do not have any fuel wash to try and keep them clean. The oil from the crankcase ventilation system, which comes through the intake port, deposits on the valves and on the ports and creates quite a buildup over time to the point where it does definitely rob engine efficiency power, and drivability. Here are a couple of the intake ports from the 2007 335i that we'll be working on today. These ports and valves are heavily carboned. We had originally thought that this car had never been carbon cleaned and it has about 75,000 miles on it. However, later we found that the service was done at a BMW dealer about 35,000 miles ago. This tells us that a good interval for the carbon cleaning would be in the 30 to 40,000 mile range. This buildup can and does become quite heavy and begins to interfere with engine efficiency, drivability, and power output. Okay, now the standard procedure for removing the carbon from the intake ports and the intake valves involves a pressurized media blaster and a pressurized air source or your air compressor the walnut shell blasting media, and this special port adapter from BMW. This fits right into the intake ports. Shop vac hose connects here to collect the walnut shell media, and the special blasting wand fits through the adapter and allows you to work the port. Now since we're removing the intake manifold and the throttle body, we'll also replace the intake manifold gaskets and the throttle body gasket. Now all of these parts are available from Bavarian Autosport. We offer them individually or as a complete kit and you can purchase them outright or rent them as a kit for your one use. You can get more details in our online store at bavauto.com or call our advisors at 800-535-2002. Now let's go ahead and get this job going. Okay, here we are at the vehicle we're going to be performing the walnut blast on for the carbon removal on the intake ports and the back side of the intake valves. This is a 2007 335i with about 80,000 miles on it. This vehicle has never had the walnut blast done before, so when we get it disassembled, we'll take a look at the ports, we'll show you what they look like, and then we'll go ahead and start the uh, walnut procedure and show you how that goes. Let's get to work now. In order to remove the intake manifold and access the intake ports, we must first remove the rear engine bay cowl tray assembly. We'll remove the left and right end covers as well as the center microfilter cover and the filter. Remove the two 8mm bolts at the front of the microfilter cover. Remove the four 8mm bolts along the rear of the microfilter cover. Remove the cover and the filter. Remove the left and right side air quality sensors. Twist the sensor to unlock it from the mounting bracket and pull it out of the bracket. Dislodge the two snap tabs and the rubber tab and remove the driver's side outer cover. Note that the brake fluid reservoir is under this cover. Remove the passenger side air quality sensor and outer cover.
Note that the engine electronics box, or e-box, is under this cover. Remove the four bolts securing the cowl tray. Dismount the wiring harness loom from the cowl tray by gently prying the loom forward at each of the three mounting tab locations. Dismount the rearward harness by pulling it forward and off of the three mounting tabs. Remove the cowl tray by lifting the forward edge up and pulling the tray toward the front of the vehicle. Use a piece of wire or cord to secure the wiring harness assemblies out of the way. Note that this vehicle has a burger tuning filter kit installed in place of the original filter and housing. The Bentley Publishing Repair Manual for the E90 3 Series chassis or the applicable chassis that you're working on will cover the removal of the original air filter assembly. Disconnect the fuel vapor recovery pipe by squeezing the outer ring and pulling upward. Remove the intake filters. After removing the filters or the original BMW filter housing, you will be at this point. Remove the valve cover trim cover by removing the four Allen head bolts. Before removing the intake manifold, we'll disconnect the oil pressure sensor, manifold pressure sensor, and remove the throttle body and the crankcase ventilation heater. Squeeze the locking clip to release and remove the oil pressure switch harness plug. Unclip the harnessing along the side of the valve cover and push it up on top of the cover. Unclip and remove the harness plug from the manifold pressure sensor. Note that this vehicle has an AFE scorcher installed. This plugs into the pressure sensor's harness. Use a small screwdriver to lift the locking tab so the harness plug can be pulled from the sensor plug housing. Remove the bypass valves. Rotate the locking ring to release the valves, then pull the valves upward. Unlock and remove the forward end of the forward bypass valve hose. And remove the vacuum hose from the valve. Disconnect and remove the opposite end of the rear bypass valve hose and set the assemblies aside. Release the intake pipe locking clip and pull the pipe from the throttle body. Remove the Torx bolt securing the intake pipe to the oil filter housing. Remove the four 10 millimeter throttle body mounting bolts. Disconnect the fuel system vent hose by pinching the quick disconnect clamp release ring and pulling the hose from the end of the throttle body nipple.
Unclip and disconnect the throttle body harness plug. Note the push tab to release the lock. Note the throttle body seal ring. We'll want to install a new seal ring when reassembling. The electrical conduit box is mounted to a bracket on the underside of the intake manifold. The box slides toward the driver's side off the two male tabs on the manifold bracket. The two tabs have small locking tabs that protrude upward. Use a screwdriver to depress the locking tabs while pulling the box off the tabs. This can be tedious, just be patient and keep trying. Disconnect the PCV heater by using a screwdriver to pry the forward and rearward locking tabs away from the heater body and pulling the heater upward. Disconnect the electrical harness plug and set the heater aside. Okay, we're now finally ready to remove the intake manifold mounting nuts and one bolt. Using an 11 millimeter socket, loosen the forward bolt and all of the nuts. The rear nut may require a universal joint and a short socket. Remove all of the fasteners. Disconnect the plastic loom clips at the front and rear corners of the manifold. Push the male nipple through the hole in the manifold webbing and the rear bracket. Pull the manifold up and off the mounting studs. The rear corner of the manifold will be a tight fit against the rear intake pipe. These are the male tabs that mount the conduit box. This is the rear bracket for the plastic loom clip. This is the rear plastic loom clip that mounts various wiring and hosing. Remove the harness plug from the starter solenoid. Fabricate a solenoid jumper using a section of 18 gauge or larger wire and a standard female spade terminal. Connect the female spade terminal to the male spade terminal in the solenoid connector housing. We'll use the solenoid jumper wire to rotate the engine so that each cylinder's intake valves are closed during the walnut blasting procedure. We'll start with cylinder number two, as this location is easy to access and film for the video. Normally, we would start with cylinder number one and work through to cylinder number six. Use a flashlight to view into the intake port. Using the solenoid jumper wire, bump the starter by touching the free end of the wire to the large battery cable terminal on the starter. Just touch the wire for an instant to turn the engine as little as possible. Watch the intake valves to verify when they're fully closed. Fill the media blaster to about two-thirds to three-quarters full with the walnut shell media. Connect a shop vac adapter to the intake port adapter tool. Firmly insert the port adapter into the intake port. Connect the shop back hose to the hose adapter. Make sure that the port adapter stays firmly inserted into the intake port. With the blaster wand affixed to the blaster's output ball valve, we're ready to begin the blasting process. Be sure that the ball valve is in the off position. Insert the wand into the access hole in the port adapter. Move the wand around to feel the intake port divider and the intake valve stems. Turn the shop back on. 
be sure to wear eye and ear protection. With the shop vac on, firmly grasp the wand and valve assembly and fully open the ball valve. Work the wand in and out and all around to fully cover the walls of the intake port and the valves, as well as the valve stems. Remember that the intake port splits into front and rear subports for the two intake valves. Inspect the ports and the valves as you continue until all of the carbon is removed. Finish by closing the media valve so that only air is moving through the wand and blast the valve seats in order to remove the remaining walnut shell media. Leave the shop back on while doing this. Once the port is finished, move to the next port. Bump the starter to close the valves in the next port and repeat the process. When all of the ports have been cleaned, clean the intake manifold mating surface on the cylinder head, install new intake manifold gaskets in the manifold and a new gasket in the throttle body, and reverse the removal steps to reassemble everything. Here you can see the obvious differences between the carboned ports and valves and the cleaned ports and valves. The owner of this 335i has noted smoother idle quality, improved drivability, and notable power delivery improvements. Now that you've seen that this procedure truly is a do-it-yourself task, as long as you have a medium-sized air compressor and a shop vac, you can visit our online store at bavauto.com or call our advisors at 800-535-2002. And don't forget to hit your like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Now with that, we've got another video to get going for you.